working. Okay, Linda Twitchell with the Building Industry Association. Extending what is called the Housing Affordable for the Workforce Program into rentals. Um, we sent a five-page letter last week, which I'm certainly not going to repeat here, uh, pointing out that when I started researching this, there appear to be real concerns as to how the state enabling law matches the county's EDI program and how that does or does not match this housing affordable program. The bottom line is I'm hoping we will do what Ken suggested this morning, and that is that we need a discussion of what the intent of IDA money, real EDI money, is really for and whether we're using that correctly or not. For instance, the local program's number one objective is to increase, which to me means create new, ongoing family wage jobs. That's supposed to be the high priority, the thing you consider first in determining where you spend your EDI money. Is it a new job? Is it ongoing, which I would presume means lasts long beyond the specific project you're financing? Is it a family wage job? Um, the rental program is available to, presumably we're going to call low-income people who earn 80% or less of the median income. So I presume when we're talking about living wage, we're probably talking about median income jobs. Um, that Building Industry Association sees a difference between home ownership, which we think benefits the community, uh, people invest in their community, in their homes, they can participate. We see a difference between that and rentals. Okay. I am not here to argue against, for instance, Habitat for Humanity or Whatcom Skagit Homes, which is a member of ours. We support them both. The issue here is not whether those are good programs. The issue here is not whether those programs might help someone who might be a worker get a good base and therefore get a job. The point is, are they creating new, ongoing family wage jobs. That's your number one objective, and that's also number one in terms of your priorities um, in your own program. Now, some of you have heard this before. If the rental program 30 is, seconds, please. Okay, give me just a second with this. Is open to people who earn 80% or less of median income, I am the face of the program. I am in that group. I am one of the people you are building this program to help. But I earn more than a lot of people in this community. My kid, for instance, works in retail, one of the major department stores in this area. Retail is an increasing source of jobs in this community. These guys are earning minimum wage or darn close. They do not get benefits. They are lucky today if they get 20 hours a week. They can't even qualify for credit cards at the stores where they work. Now, my suggestion is do not give us handouts. Do not give us social programs with EDI money. And I'm calling it a social program and a handout because this was described to me as the rental program is going to live, raise living wages because by reducing, just a second, I'm almost done, reducing the cost of living by giving you a subsidized rental, your income will be worth more, so we're going to call it a living wage. I was told that is one of the arguments in favor of this, and I was told that by the administrator of the program. Do you have any idea how insulting and how bizarre that sounds to someone who's not earning much money? That we're going to now declare magically that your wages are wrap, worth Wrap more. it up, please, Linda. Okay, okay, I'm wrapping it up. The point here is don't give us handouts. Use the EDI money to give us a strong economy. Do please what we believe the state law is, is suggesting here. Let's use it to develop businesses or maintain businesses that can create new, ongoing, living wage jobs so we can afford to go out and choose what kind of housing we want. Thank you. Thank you. Just give them to him and he'll pass them down. My name is Daniel Probst, and I'm going to go way off topic here. And I'm actually here to thank you guys for something. <laughs> That's <laughs> <So> first. <laughs> That's what I figured. And I waited all this time. And I don't smoke pot, but you're going to think I do. So 
<laughs> after you, after and you I don't article. mind if you do. <laughs> After you read the article in there. So, and I know you guys talked to Rick um, earlier in the day about budget and passing that. And, um, I'm here to thank you for make, making that happen. And I know the parks just got the land, got the deed back in January. And uh, we've already started working with the parks on how we're going to start um, going in there and, and basically working with the parks to try to, uh, you know, create this vision that we have for this park that's going to be an incredible benefit and asset uh, to our community. But my, my, my vision for this park, as you'll see in the article, is to create a trail system from Bellingham Bay to Mount Baker. And you know, there's the Bay to Baker Trail, this is not that. Um, this summer I actually tested a route, I ran from Bellingham Bay to the summit of Mount Baker in 21 and a half hours. And my goal is to actually to bring back a version of the Mount Baker Marathon that will be a worldwide um, race. And what we need, you know, now that we have the park, what we need is actually some, some inspiration to make this happen. And, you know, in the park budget you guys got today, it's basically for maintenance. And so what we need is some outsourced outside funding. We're looking at the state right now to kind of make this into the park, you know, we just don't want it to sit there. We want to actually make something out of this. So you'll, you'll read in the article what my, my vision is for this, and I hope you guys find a way to support that. Thank you. Wait, is yeah. your article your Yes, article? yes it's bookmarked. It's, it's yes, bookmarked. It's bookmarked. In fact, I'm on the bottom of the bookmark. Oh, okay. yeah. Running in. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Harry Eskridge from the Realtors. Um, I kind of have a joke for, the, for you guys to begin with. Um, how do you tell the difference between a drunk driver and a uh, pot smoker at the stop sign? Drunk driver drives through it, the pot smoker sits there and waits for it to turn green. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> I'm here tonight to <laughs> encourage you to, uh, <laughs> to uh, keep the $40,000 in that uh, appropriation bill. I know there's a lot of discussion about exempt wells and, and the water quantity in the county, but um, I wanted to, to tell you that I confirmed with the Realtors Legal Council tonight that we are on for amicus briefing for that, along with the Farm Bureau. We've already expended about $20,000 getting our brief ready for this case um, so that we can join in when the, when the time comes. And the big issue for us is um, although the exempt wells and, and, and water quality issues are something that's up for, for settlement, the bigger issue that we are more concerned about from the real estate industry is what is the role between the Growth Management Hearings Board and the Department of Ecology? Who's going to make a decision on whether or not a county has adequately met their objectives for water quality and quantity? We believe it belongs with the Department of Ecology, which is kind of a weird thing for us to be arguing, but anyway, on their side for once. Um, not the Growth Management Hearings Board, and I, I think that issue gets overlooked quite a lot. If you guys back out of it now, that issue doesn't get decided and the, and the Whatcom County decision stands, which is just a horrible thing. The, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is to let you know, I know you didn't take comment today during the um, committee meeting, but the realtors, um, in disagreement with Mr. Crawford and, and our, our friends over at the BIA, we are supporting the EDI funds. When this project or this, this funding first came forward, there was a lot of discussion about workforce housing. And we heard the gentleman from Alpha Technologies today. You'll get the same thing from Bob Pritchard if you talk to him. What is his biggest problem? It's recruiting young people to come here and work. What is the biggest problem with recruiting young people to here to work? They don't have the quality of life that they're looking for. They want some place where they can walk to work or bike to work. Bob Pritchett put a bike repair shop in his business for crying out loud. And they, he still can't get enough money to these people that they are, you know, and, and stay within his business model, that they can ride their bikes to work all the time and, seconds, and walk please. to work all the time. Housing affordability is a huge issue in Bellingham. Um, most of you on the council have worked with us at one point or another in trying to get that down, and we saw this EDI funding as a way to try and, you know, and push that, that pricing down. It's important. Yes, it is somewhat artificial. It can be insulting, I think. But if you're one of those people that benefits and you're one of the business owners that, that can attract people here to work for you because it is a little bit lower, 
I think it's a very important program, so we're here to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Like the new microphone. Ellen Baker, Glacier. Um, Perry and I don't always agree. I do agree with him about uh, supporting the funding for the ED, uh, for the GMHB case. I think that's very important. Uh, it's certainly recognized statewide that, that it is worth, you know, getting a ruling from appeals, and I hope that continues. Uh, so just a word in support of that little budget item. It is tiny. Forty grand is nothing. But the issue is, is very important. It's worth a lot. I disagree with Perry where it comes to the EDI fund. The EDI fund, and you know, as you may recall, was it last year or the year before we took this issue to the Attorney General? Uh, EDI funds have a very specific purpose. It needs to benefit the entire community. A tax is used, uh, you know, the, a tax is collected, and it should be put to general public purpose, uh, public facilities. When private rental properties, private homes become a uh, public work, then I think we have got fog. And I, I would like to see less fog and more clarity in the use of the EDI funds. If you want to start a program for, for uh, uh, affordable housing, make it so. But don't confuse it with the economic development uh, program per se. I see more and more of that. I saw it happen in Ferndale with the extension of a city's infrastructure for affordable housing. I mean, it gets more and more obtuse. So I'm, I'm hoping that the EDI funding remains in, like Linda would say, and a lot of others, let's get affordable jobs by having a really robust economy. That's the best way to use the funds. Build the public infrastructure, real thing. Thank you. Paul Schistler, uh, Bellingham. I just wanted to say a, a few words in support of the uh, request made to you to allow EDI funds to be used for rental construction. Um, you've gotten a lot of information from me and others, uh, additional numbers that I was able to provide <coughs> Councilmember Brenner today to answer some of her questions. and. I, I would encourage you, please, to take action on this question this evening. Uh, I know all of you don't support it, but I hope there is a majority that will. I, I also wanted to agree with Council Members Mann and Brown, who said we really do need to take a look at what are the best uses of EDI funding, looking ahead, looking back. Uh, clearly, this proposed use is allowable under state law. That has been reviewed thoroughly by the county's attorneys and others. Uh, is it the best use of funds? That's a good discussion to have. I think it'll stand up against other projects that have used EDI fund in terms of leveraging, matching funds. As we've already shown, 12 to 1 EDI funds so far leveraging almost $6 million in home construction uh, in the last three years. It would be nice to scale that up. Uh, I think the rental construction will show an even better leveraging. These will be ongoing jobs in construction, and construction tends to pay a better wage, uh, maybe a, uh, a living wage, maybe a family wage. Jobs in construction are good. Building housing leads to jobs in construction. But this money, remember, is used for public facility construction. So there are jobs that may be one-time temporary jobs building public facilities, the fact that housing is an outcome is icing on the cake. The fact that it frees up a low-wage worker's money not spent on rent to be spent in the local economy, that's a third set of economic impacts, as I pointed And the fourth one, not in my memo, is that when these dollars come back to the county, they can be reused for additional economic development projects. So as there's ongoing discussion about best use of EDI, I hope I'm invited to the table, and I look forward to those discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to talk to us during open session? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the open session. We're going to move on to our consent agenda. Yeah, and I think we're supposed to divide this up because the second item is for the Flood Control Zone Board of Supervisors. So um, regardless, the uh, committee considered both items today and 
move to recommend approval three to zero on both but uh, I guess I'll go ahead and move the first item for the County Council all right so there's a motion for item number one which is a request approval of the County Executive enter into a contract amendment between Whatcom County and the Camp Horizon Foundation Any discussion all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye opposed passes unanimously and now acting as the uh, Whatcom County Flood Control District Board of Supervisors I'll move the second item which is the uh, well you can read it uh, it's a request for approval of the County Executive to enter into a contract between Whatcom County and Herrera Environmental Consultants for Lower Canyon Creek Salmon Habitat Restoration. Any discussion on that one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Then we have the ordinance amending the 2014 Whatcom County budget eighth request um, in the amount of $9 million. $53,575. Uh, this was a Recommended for approval two to zero with one abstention and I would so move uh, just a note here The abstention was from mr. Buchanan. I think it was regarding the forty thousand dollars for attorney fees uh, In which he wanted to wait for more information if I'm not mistaken Ms. Brenner. Yeah, I'm gonna request this was a lot of big ticket items stuck in together with one small one I would like to have us vote on them separately and I think in the future, I think when we have big controversial items, I would really uh, appreciate seeing them done as um, separate budget amendments. So that's my request. Okay, I got a, a no head and shot nod from our clerk that we can't bifurcate these. You could move to amend to pull an item. Why can't we? It would have to be two separate ordinances. So. Well, then you would need to move to pull the one piece out, and then in two weeks we would have to introduce an additional ordinance that would have that piece in well, it. Well, we probably to have to do separately. that anyway, but I would like to vote on them separately. I think that this council deserves to be able to vote on these separately. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen so many big controversial items in the, in the same budget, except it at uh, regular budget time okay so is that your motion that's my motion Wait, what is the motion to vote on these separately just to somehow bifurcate them and vote on them separately we were just which told the that we weren't able clerk to is do told that. we can't do so I guess the motion is out of order but I can I make a mo uh, comment in regard to that every one of these uh, well the sheriff stuff wasn't but the controversial ones the legal counsel the reconveyance the two EDI projects uh, and the uh, computers were all uh, supported by the majority of the council in the past. In other words, the, the executives bringing forward items that this council has already approved. Yeah, it's, but it's looking for money. Different council members have done it on different. Yeah. Lines. Okay, I just wanted to. Point we out. haven't approved the forty thousand already. Similar money in the past. Well, I think we've given direction that we would, whether it was an executive session or in the council. Fair enough. So, they, Brown. so um, I think Councilmember Crawford is correct with the part, with the exception I can't remember about the 5600 for the sheriff's office or the 1900 for the sheriff's office right. and the 40,000 we've just dis discussed today but the other four items we were at this particular council uh, voted on in the last couple of weeks Ms. Brenner I move to remove the North uh, Bellingham stormwater Facility, whatever the heck it's called, regional stormwater facility. So, so that would be an amendment. Be yep. A, a moved amendment to remove the two and a half million dollars for the city of Bellingham regional stormwater facility. Yep. Okay. Any discussion on that proposed amendment? All those in favor, say aye. 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 To remove it? Yeah. Aye. All right, that's uh, all those opposed say no. 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 So that fails four to three with council members Kremen, Brenner, and Mann in favor. Any other discussions? Yeah. Mr. I, move, Mann. I move that we uh, amend by removing the six million for Linden. All right, so we have a motion in front of us to remove the six million dollars for the Linden water treatment plant. Discussion on that? Okay. Mr. Laus. 
We do have a signed contract on that obligating the county to that. This is the transfer of funds to be able to get it into the right spot to be able to release it. So if uh, I, I'm just uh, letting you know if you want to hold it up in that aid, we, we will end up being in breach of contract. And this mm. is something that's been going on for the last couple of years. And um, so I just make you guys aware of that. Take I've voted advice. against this for two years. I know you have. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Brown? And my understanding is that they're already doing the work, correct? Yes, there are many millions of dollars into a $32 million project of which they're borrowing the majority of the money for. And I think this is a $4 million loan and a $2 million grant. And for those that are interested, I have articulated in front of uh, everybody that if I was on the EDI board when this was approved, this would be something that I wouldn't have been in favor of because I think it's too big of a chunk to one entity. With that said, um, we have gone through the process. It's been upheld, and the council has approved the contract uh, on this, as they have with the Bellingham uh, stormwater sewer project also. Ms. Brenner. Um, maybe I can influence Ken a little. I mean, Councilmember Mann here a little bit. Um, I'm going to. I would support the reconveyance part because that's the movement of the money that has already been spent. Even though I didn't vote for it, and I didn't support it, to me it's the movement of the money. This is the same, pretty much the same thing. On um, so, you know, you can decide. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor of the movement to uh, the amendment to remove the water treatment project money from Linden, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. So that fails five to two with council members Mann and Weimer consistently opposed. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I may have misspoken on the Bellingham one. I don't know whether the contract has been approved by the council or not on that. I, I think it has. It may not have been. I, I thought that we had gone through. If it hasn't, it will be coming your way. So wait a second. Hold on. Mr. Ms. Brenner. So you're saying we'd still have another vote? We just voted on it. We didn't vote on it. Yes, we did. Yeah, we you, voted to remove it. it you guys happen. get four or five cuts at the pie on all these things as we move them through. I'm saying tonight we just voted. And it was four to three to keep it in. To keep it Any in. Any other discussion? To vote on. It, yes. Ms. Brenner. Well, I just can't do it. I, I really support some of these items, specifically the $40,000 one. But I can't bring myself to vote for half million dollar, a quarter million dollar item to do the 40000 And I already told our attorney I'd be willing to go out and raise the money. And I know that... Uh, Councilmember Kremen has already talked to the Association of Counties, and they're interested in helping out financially. I just don't think to be, I don't think it's fair to bury it in these humongous things. I don't think it's right. I think it's I think it's disrespectful uh, to the public to stick it in there and hope that everybody will hold their nose and vote for this thing. I don't think it's the right thing to do. All right. Well, just to make it clear for everybody, I'm going to make a motion to remove the $40,000 for additional outside legal counsel. Um, I think the indications from the plaintiffs are, make it clear that settlement's possible and will be quicker than legal and will be cheaper in the long run, and I can't support the $40,000. So there's mine. So let's vote on that. Ms. Would, Brenner. I well, actually, I would have voted to remove it, to vote on it by itself, but you're talking about voting to get rid of it. I can't do that. Well, that that's, was going to be my question. If we vote to remove it, can we then vote on it separately to pass it? No, we can't. Although there's really no rush to pass Two weeks. that one. Oh, four, four weeks, because you have to introduce it and then vote on it. Yes. All right. Well, I need to think about this one. <laughs> let, let, We're going to stall for ten seconds. No, I, I, I want to. I want to talk about it oh, because okay. I actually, I, I, I support the forty thousand. Um, for our council, for, for our legal council, because I, I, I've never been talking about backing out. I've just been talking about whether we need to pay somebody from Seattle to do this job for us when I think there's, I think we're going to win. There's no question, and I think we've got a lot of support. Um, 
in other places. I'm not sure we need to spend county money on Seattle attorneys. That would really be my, that's really my only question. It's not about backing out. I think settlement is an option. Uh, and the, my, my problem is I'm going to vote against the whole ordinance because I, 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 the, the, the EDI stuff is just, is really problematic for me and I've been consistent on that overall. So I would vote to remove the 40,000. So now I'm just talking to myself where I'm doing it. I'm going to vote to remove the 40,000 so that I can vote for it at some point, hopefully in two weeks, as a standalone item because I know that tonight I will not vote for it as part of the package. Yeah, I know, but we don't need to. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. So that fails five to two. And Council I'm really members confused. Weimer and Mann in favor. So now we have the whole package in front of us. Is there any other discussion? Uh, I guess we're ready for the roll call. Well, hold on. I want to say what I want to say again, because there's a lot of people in this room that tend to say things that are in inaccurate. I support the 40000 for... I support the legal case that we have, absolutely. I even will support the 40000 if given the opportunity, but uh, it, because it's part of this package with the EDI funds, I am not going to support this ordinance. Ms. Brenner. I'm going to say the same exact thing. It's just a different EDI project that, than him, but it's the exact same thing. I don't think it's right for us to be voting this way and hoping everybody will hold their nose and, and vote for all this money to be spent. I think it's awful. I'm also going to vote against the whole package for probably totally different reasons, but uh, maybe if enough of us do, we'll get it back in uh, four weeks separated. Two weeks? Why do we keep saying four weeks? It yeah, has to be introduced. Oh, can't introduce Mr. it. Mr. Brown. Time. So my, uh, my view on the 40000 is my understanding is it is to provide a budget, that budget could be used for legal counsel or for settlement negotiations for which we would probably need specialized legal counsel for anyway. And in my personal experience, it's actually cheaper to, to hire a lawyer who specializes in a, in a very, if you've got a very specific area of law of which water law is, in my experience, you're better off hiring someone who's very uh, experienced in that area. It's actually cheaper than hiring someone local who's inexperienced and paying for them to get up to speed. All right, so we have the whole package in front of us. I guess we're ready for the roll call. Sam Crawford? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? No. Carl Weimer? No. Barbara Brenner? No. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. So that passes four to three with council members Brenner, Mann, and Weimer opposed. Oh, we like to yes. keep things interesting. Yeah, I know. That was a cliffhanger, I'll tell you. <laughs> the last one was, uh, this is, oh, I'm sorry. No, the second one is the uh, to the Flood Control Zone Board, District Board of Supervisors resolution amending the Flood Control Zone District budget, 2014 budget second request in the amount of $42,700. The committee recommended approval two to one, and I would so move. And in doing so, I will speak against the ordinance. I still believe that uh, uh, the tribe ought to, the tribe caused this by not giving us something as simple as access to the property. They are the primary beneficiary of this. And uh, I think that we ought to get, at least have a discussion with them about covering some, of, some or all of this cost before we approve this. Ms. Brenner. They're not the only primary beneficiary, and the Mount Baker School District is another primary beneficiary. And I think it's really important that we work on this and we keep postponing it. And I'm not sure why the tribe didn't weigh in earlier, but I do know they, the Nooksack tribe has had their problems, and they've been pretty, pretty much caught up in their own personal uh, tribal concerns and I don't begrudge them. I don't think they did it just to, you know, to, to cause us to have to wait. So I don't want to, I don't want to hurt the Mount Baker School District anymore by postponing this at all. Mr. Mann. For me, it's not just about this 42,700. It's about the next time when we 
have an agreement for a complex project that involves another jurisdiction, whether it's a tribe or, or somebody else, where where is their incentive to to behave properly and coordinate with us and work with us? Uh, it, it's it, uh, it's it's very insulting to me uh, to the county when we're spending all this money, millions of dollars, and the tribe is one of the primary beneficiaries, and they they can't even get around to uh, giving us permission to go on their land to do the measurements that we need to do to do the project. And if we just give them the money and say, okay, don't worry about it, we know you've been busy. Well, we're busy. We're super busy up here. We, we got a ton of things going on. For them to grant us permission to have access to the land should have been pretty easy. If, uh, so I want, I, I want them to pay us back for the 42,700. I, I don't see I don't see that as unreasonable and okay. I I can't vote for this until that conversation has, <clears throat> has been had. Well, I agree with Ms. Brenner on this one. Um, I, I think there's a lot of benefit to the school district out there. I think our staff spent a lot of time in this and we need to move it forward. So I don't want to delay. I understand the frustration with the Nooksacks, but they're certainly not the only local government that's or state government that has slowed down a project. Um, so I think it's time to, to move this forward, so I'm going to vote in favor. Any other discussion? If I may, I'd just like to the, let the council know that we're, we're into this for over $400,000 at this particular time. And it, like I said today, is, is if the council draws a line in the sand and says we aren't moving forward until the Nooksack tribe pays $42,000 for this. Um, you know, obviously we can try um, over the next month, but if the answer is no, you know, what, what, what are you, where are we going to go? Are we going to scuttle the project at that particular time and, and waste the 400000 of effort that has gone into it at this particular time? Um, I don't like the situation that we're in, but from practical, for a practical purpose right now, holding this thing up for another year and possibly putting another year's delay on it uh, may put us out of the cycle for the federal and state funding. We're looking forward to actually pay for the, um, the construction of the project. Um, so I, I just... I just caution you is, is that uh, from a practical business standpoint at this particular time, I think that I think your displeasure has been known and I think that if given the opportunity we can articulate that to the, uh, to the Nooksack tribe and that we can um, uh, use it as, a, as an object lesson moving forward. Uh, I understand the drawing the line in the sand but we're also risking 400,000 on a project that we've felt has been needed, not just for the Nooksack tribe, but also for the Mount Baker School District and the residents of, of Deming. So um, we'll obviously follow your direction. If you'd like to give us, uh, give us a, another three months to, to work on it, I don't know what the answer is going to be, but uh, my recommendation is, is to pass this, get us moving forward again, and let us have the conversation uh, let them know what our displeasure is and see whether we can uh, work something out with them but still make progress on this uh, project. Mr. Brown? So I know this discussion is about um, the feeling that the Nooksack tribe has, has in, created a delay that has increased the costs. One of my concerns is if we now create our own delay that that will increase the costs as well and we'll be responsible for funding those so and it sounds like there's there is a potential to lose a federal funding component to which of this which if that was the case would be far greater than the 40,000 we're talking about Ms. Brenner. well I have an idea I think we should pass this and I will commit to writing a letter for the council you can all see it before it goes anywhere and showing our displeasure on what happened and that I think you're right it 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 if we don't really know what it is I think I know and I don't think it was anything to insult us but we don't know and I think we do need to get 
some, and, and I think a letter from the county council would be appropriate. Um, but that's up to you. Yeah, just, just come on. Hey, I, it kind of reminds me of what Mr. Willing said here today about, you know, we jump up and down on our seat and say, you can't do that. And then, you know, we have no enforcement. We have no follow-up on that. I, I, I'm not saying you're doing that, but it just, it's kind of it's like it has no teeth, you know, just send him a letter. Oh, we're not happy. You know, no. Mr. Lau's told us today that he's left messages on the chairman's phone and at his home, at his office. It's not, it's just, it doesn't feel right to, to just take that and then go and pay for it as well. Ms. Brenner? I'm not saying, you know, saying I'm not, I think we should express um, how disrespectful this is, period. It's not what they're doing, it, you know, in planning. They're not saying, oh, you disrespected me. They're saying we're going to take care of it, and then according to Peter, they're not. But I'm saying... You know, we need to do this for more than the Nooksack tribe. But I do think it would be very appropriate to let the Nooksack tribe, I mean, I think it's great that the executive will do this too, but I, I don't think it, I think it would be very helpful for the council to send that kind of letter. We never, we, don't, we never do that. So I think it would be really helpful to do it. Mr. Crawford, and then Mr. Kremen. I, I'd be careful about assuming that you know, we've spent 400000 and I don't know, I, I, I don't think Executive Louse you meant exactly in this tone, but we're not just losing that money. This started, well, the Deming Dyke there has always been a problem, uh, and it's gone through a lot of iterations and and uh, what's, the, what's it called when you riprap, you know, over the years, which is the old way of doing things. But this really started with the flood in January of 2010. And uh, what's that little road that goes over the hill? Um, Marshall Hill Road, yeah. The, the creek there comes down and we're Marshall, at the bottom of Marshall Hill. That's where it crosses Mount Baker Highway. And during that event... That where it, after it crosses the highway and goes into the Nooksack River is the point where it flooded that whole area and the, the combined flood waters are what. So, so the analysis was one of those alternatives things we do and we would do that anyway because it was a big problem at the time and we're trying to address this, whatever they called that, the 250 year flood or whatever the case may be. Um, our work on this today does not preclude doing all of what's proposed or any portion of what's proposed in the future. But my point is it's been going on four years since this happened. Um, until we can get some clarity on this, we've got the work that's sitting there. And yes, I believe a lot of the work is actionable. Uh, we've got some prioritizations within that work like we do with every analysis of how we want to approach it. But if this gets us out of the cycle for 2015, which I kind of doubt, don't forget we're not doing this this year. Uh, and I don't think any short delay, like a month or two, is going to make that much difference. I still believe this engineering work can be done to get us to the 2015 construction season. And, uh, yeah, I think I would if, if the Nooksack came back and said, no, we don't want any part of this. Um, I think I would look up, take a hard look at that project and look at the various aspects of it in terms of what, what parts of this do we want to do, what benefits everybody, and what doesn't. But I, I, I just don't want to go into this with this tone that, well, we spent $400,000 and, you know, this is kind of, you know, negating those efforts because there's a lot more to it than that and there's a lot of options we have in terms of how we want to address the issues in that area. So uh, I'm a little skeptical that it's that urgent to get it done tonight and that it's... Uh, going to uh, lay to waste the efforts that have gone before this. Mr. Kremen. Thank you. First of all, I, I appreciate the willingness on the part of Councilmember Brenner to pen a letter to the, uh, the Nooksack tribe. I think it probably is, uh, although well-intended, ill-advised. I think my, my guess is the the non-response that we're getting, the uh, apparent lack of concern and any involvement or particip participation is really, 
I, I believe that the, the crux of the, the, the problem is, is, is unrelated to this particular project. I think that they're, I think they have a, a very rare, challenging, problematic uh, situation right now with their, their governing board. And they really are having a, a very difficult time even functioning. So, yeah, I think we should keep our powder dry as far as writing nasty grams or, um, you know, letters that may not be uh, the most uh, what, encouraging or appropriate. Uh, and I, I think that we, we are going to, I mean, I, 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 there's probably no one here that, when push comes to shove, thinks that we ought to not fund this this project. It needs to be funded, and it has to be funded. And I, I just think that uh, we should fund it as soon as we can. I don't think there's really any reason to to put it off any longer. I do think that we ought to continue to make efforts to work with the tribe in a positive way and hopefully in the not too distant future uh, the the rancor and the inability to function properly or adequately on the part of the the, the Nooksack uh, Council uh, will pass and will uh, in the future be able to work more productively and effectively with them. All right, any other discussion? We have the motion for approval in front of us. I guess we're ready for the roll call. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? No. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Sam Crawford? No. So that passes five to two with council members Crawford and Mann opposed. Okay, the last item we had in finance was the discussion and possible action on an economic development investment program, EDI board um, recommendation to modify guidelines and add single and multifamily home construction as an allowable use. This uh, recommendation for approval passed two to one, and I would so move. All right, we have the motion in front of us. Any discussion? Mr. Mann. Well, it's a very interesting day when the BIA and <laughs> Mr. Brown agree with me on, on something I've said, but I, I, I appreciate that because I do think our EDI fund is mislabeled, frankly. We should come up with a more accurate name because um, it's, it's more like an infrastructure slush fund. And I, I, I'm... I, I hate always being like the naysayer, a Grinch on this on this EDI fund, but I I never I I, I don't feel like we've had had very many projects uh, in my four years that seemed really in the spirit of uh, the EDI. So that that's sort of the that's the overall picture, and that's that's why I, you know Linden I was I've always been against the Bellingham stormwater one I've had problems with and. And this one, frankly, this EDI uh, for the multifamily home construction has really, really bothered me from the beginning. Um, I am not going to say how I'm going to vote on it, but um, <laughs> I, but I, I just want to say, you know, I, I, I think it probably has a lot, a lot of good that can come from it. And like the other EDI projects I've seen, I just. I don't know how it is actually legitimately an EDI fund, and that's different from being legally uh, viable for the EDI program. Just whether it's whether it's legit is more of a question for me. Ms. Brenner. Well, I was having the same concerns, but I had a good discussion with Paul Schisler and with Nancy Larson, and not only do I feel there is data there to support that it does, you know, provide housing for people who want to get decent jobs in Whatcom County. But there's one thing I really like about the um, 
the rental part, the rental part, every one of those are going to come to us for final approval, whereas virtually none of the uh, single-family homes have ever come to us, I don't think. And I really resent that because that we are supposed to be the ones who approve projects. And we just keep giving away more and more of our legislative authority. And I'm sorry we do that, but this one at least we have some say when those projects come to us. And I do agree with, uh, I think Councilmember Mann said it, uh, somebody else said it too. We need to have a specific special committee of the whole meeting to discuss EDI and how we want to see it used. We need to talk about our policy um, instead of us kind of, you know, frustratingly going back and forth on different things. I think we need that policy, the whole policy on EDI expenditures needs to be revisited soon, like very soon. All right. So I am going to support it. Any other discussion? Mr. Brown. So, so I, um, I agree with the comment. I think that we, we, we do need to have a much more conscious approach to what we're trying to do with the EDI money because it does seem to be all over the place. Um, that being said, uh, I'm going to support this. I support the, um, the efforts to try and provide people with access to housing, although I, I have throughout this whole process had reluctance about thinking that EDI money is the right way to fund this. Mr. Kremen. I'll be brief, Mr. Chair. Uh, I thought the most compelling argument tonight on this issue was uh, provided by Mr. Eskridge from the, uh, the realtors. I thought uh, what he had to say was valid and had a lot of impact. And uh, I was somewhat uh, torn on the issue, but uh, I'm, go I'm going to support it. I think that, uh, that it is a, first of all, it, it is a, allowable under law, clearly allowable. And I do think that there, there are economic development benefits associated with this expenditure, and I'm going to support it. All right. We have the motion in front of us. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Uh, that passes five to two with council members um, Ann and Crawford opposed. That's all we had. All right, we're on to an ordinance from no committee. It's an ordinance amending the Whatcom County Code regarding lot clustering standards in the rural district. I'll move uh, approval. We have a motion to approve from Mr. Crawford. Any and I think discussion. I just want to say I believe this was a, was GM, or a hearings board compliance issue. And it is. This, uh, Resolves one of those issues. Right. That's and it went correct. through the planning commission. Yeah, we had this yes. it was recommended. planning commission yes. and yeah. planning committee. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it gets us one step closer. Do it. Mr. Brown. I, I just need to ask Ms. Frank a question on this. Okay. We'll stall for a minute. <laughs> Anybody want to talk about anything else for a minute? Yeah, I want to talk about something. Let's see. I've got something here. All, All right, right, Mr. Well, he's doing that. This is this will really bore you at 11 o'clock at oh, night. Oh, God. Don't this was the leg state legislature's intent in 1997 in creating the rural sales tax. They say, the legislature recognizes the economic hardship that rural distressed areas throughout the state have undergone in recent years. Numerous rural distressed areas across the state have encountered serious economic downturns, resulting in significant job loss and business failure. In 1991, the legislature enacted two major pieces of legislation to promote economic development and job creation, with particular emphasis on worker training, income and emergency services support, along with community revitalization through planning services and infrastructure assistance. However, even though those programs have been of assistance, rural distressed areas still face serious economic problems, including above average unemployment rates from job losses and below average unemployment growth, low rate of business startups, and persistent erosion of vitally important resource-driven industries. The legislature also recognizes that the rural distressed areas in Washington have an abiding ability and consistent will to overcome these obstacles by building on their historic foundations of business enterprise, 
local leadership and outstanding work ethic. Oh, now, God. how we evolve that into funding rental apartments, I just, I'm sorry, I had to make that statement. But. All right. Do we have to answer him? Uh, no, Robert? I'm not answering him. I just want to say the, the real reason was the Growth Management Act that forced all the economic development into the cities, Actually and we were supposed not. to get a, yeah, a revenue sharing, and we never not. got it. You want to know the real reason? This is 82-14-370. If you go back to you don't want to know what 82-14-360, and Mr. Crimmin will agree with me when he remembers Do that we? it was – 82-14-360 was the key piece of legislation, and it was called Special Stadium Sales and Use Taxes. Ouch. And the legislature had to respond to the rural counties to get enough votes for that. And this was with, it was it Safeco or CenturyLink? It was Safeco. It was Safeco Field. Yeah. They had to, to get enough votes in the legislature, they had to pass that rural sales tax. That's what that was all about. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with growth management or Let any of that. Let it go. I'll, I will not. All right, go. back to the ordinance amending the Whatcom County Code regarding lot clustering standards. We have the motion in front of us. Any other discussion? We're ready for the roll call. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Stein. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. So that passes with six votes in favor and one abstention, Mr. Brown. Okay, next is a request for confirmation of the county executive's appointment to Barbara Warren.